Damage is quite literally everything in Genshin. It determines if and how fast you can clear certain content, such as the Spiral Abyss and the regular combat events. Naturally, as free-to-play or even pay-to-win players, you would like to know which characters would be good to put your resources and primo gems into so as to maximize your gains. Today, I would like to cover the best 5-star DPSs of every element to help you to make a better decision and improve your team's overall damage output. Do note that when I say DPS, I'm referring to on-field DPS characters who have to be on the field to do damage, such as Linny. Characters such as Furina, who is more like a sub-DPS who can work off-field, will not be considered for this list. In short, on-field DPS characters are ones whose kit will not work unless they are on the field. Before we continue, I would like to say that 94% of you who watch my videos are not subscribed. If you're one of them, do consider supporting the channel by hitting the subscribe button to get us to our next goal of 10,000 subscribers. Thank you so much! Let's first start off with Animal. There are only two on-field 5-star Animal Damage dealers, being Xiao and the Wanderer. For my pick, I'm going for the Wanderer. The Wanderer is a unique animal DPS who uses his elemental skill to hover in the air then deal stronger normal and charged attacks. The elements he absorbs during his skill also provides various effects such as stronger damage or longer skill. What makes the Wanderer particularly strong is how fast and powerful his normal attacks are without needing to actually rely on his burst. His gameplay is also really really fun overall. When compared with Xiao however, who can definitely deal more damage especially when coupled with Xian Yun, suffers from energy recharge issues. He only gains energy when he uses his skill outside of his burst, which means his damage window is severely limited unlike the Wanderer who can deal strong attacks with quick uptime of his skill. What's more, against smaller enemies, Xiao's plunging attacks will also knock them away which will make it harder for him to deal damage to them. As such, my top pick for the animal DPS is the Wanderer. For Geo, there are also only two on-field 5-star Geo damage dealers, being Navia and Ito. Chiori is more of a sub-DPS than on-field, so she doesn't really count. Navia, as a Geo DPS, primarily collects crystallized shards through Geo elemental reactions, especially from using her burst. When she collects enough Geo shards, it basically gives her the maximum number of pellets for a shotgun umbrella to deal quick and massive damage with her skill. She also has two shots for a gumbrella with a relatively short cooldown that also gives her a geo infusion for normal and charged attacks which actually deal pretty good damage. Contrasting this with Ito, who uses his elemental skill to gain charges, then unleashes his geo infused normal and charged attacks after activating his elemental burst. Similar to Xiao, the issue with Ito is that he has energy recharge issues which reduces his burst up time and hence the overall damage that he can do. Navia however, simply gets huge damage easily without having to rely on her burst which makes her the superior duo DPS here. For Electro, the three main on-field DPSs are Kerting, the Raiden Shogun, and Sino. Although Sino relies on the Dendro reactions, he can deal pretty good damage, but is also severely limited by his energy recharge issues and the lack of resistance to interruption, which honestly is a no-go for me. This leaves me with an honestly tough choice between the Raiden Shogun and Kerting. Kerting, although a standard banner 5-star character, can deal good electro damage, especially with the presence of Dendro. When you pair her with the Thundering Fury artifact, she can activate the Electro Infusion on her normal and charged attacks almost indefinitely when she uses her elemental skill, giving her 100% Electro Infusion uptime. Her burst is also no joke, capable of dealing significant damage against the enemies. Against the Electro Archon Raiden, you would think that I would pick Raiden instead of Kerting. However, although Raiden is a good battery to help the team keep their burst up, her primary way of dealing electro damage is through her elemental burst 
which honestly does not deal as much damage as you would like unless you have a C2 unlocked. Her damage is also reliant on her burst being up. What's more, even though her skill is good for electro application, it doesn't deal that much damage overall. That said, the Raiden Shogun honestly isn't an on-field DPS, but more of a support at C0. As such, my personal pick for the best Electro on-field DPS is going to Kerting instead. For Dendro, when we talk about overall DPS, Nahida definitely takes the cake with a strong elemental skill. However, Nahida is technically a sub-DPS who uses a skill then switches out. So let's give the actual on-field DPSs El Hatem and Tainari a chance, shall we? My pick out of these two will be El Hatem. When El Hatem uses its elemental skill, which is similar to Kerting's, it grants him a Dendro infusion on his normal, charged, and plunging attacks as he gains a light chisel mirror. To keep it short about the mirrors, you can gain mirrors by using his elemental skill and charged or plunging attacks to get a maximum of 3 mirrors. Using his burst will deal damage and either consume or give him mirrors depending on how many mirrors he possesses. It might sound quite confusing but it's honestly quite easy to get a hang of once you get used to it. But why did I pick El Hatem over Tainari? Dendro requires reactions to be strong but as Tainari is a charged attack bow user, it is more difficult to use the cheaper characters such as Sing Xiu and Kuki Shinobu with him and thereby having to rely on other more expensive Hydro applicators such as Furina and Kokomi and Electro applicators such as Raiden. His charge attacks are also quite reliant on his skill which has quite a bit of cooldown at about 12 seconds which leaves him without Dendro damage in the meantime. El Hatem, however, being a sword normal and charge attack user allows him to stay closer to the enemy to make full use of the cheaper characters to activate the different dendro reactions such as Hyper Bloom and Aggravate which will help to significantly increase his overall damage. He can also keep applying dendro a lot more easily for the reactions as well. From Hydro, there are a total of 3 on-field DPSs. Ayato, Chao, and Nuvalet. Ayato unfortunately pales in comparison to both Chout and Nuvalet as he not only cannot deal much damage with his normal attacks, he also has ICD, meaning he cannot get as much reaction damage as he would like. This leaves Chout and Nuvalet. While Chout is honestly a really good DPS, his primary issue is that his kit is rather complicated to play due to having to switch between his bow and melee stances and if you are unable to time his skill properly, you'll be left with an insanely long cooldown that will hence reduce your overall damage. For a fairly easy, straightforward kit that deals a lot of damage, Nuvalet is the way to go. His main gimmick revolves around the source water droplets. Hitting enemies with his skill grants 3 droplets, or his burst grants 6 droplets. Collecting 3 droplets will allow Nuvalet to immediately fire off a strong beam of water with its charge attacks and causing up to 3 types of hydro related reactions will also give him the strongest charge attack possible. Although he does have his flaws such as the lack of resistance to interruption at C0 and the requirement to use his skill and burst at the right time to ensure that there are always droplets on the field and this overall is worth it for the huge damage that Nuvalet does thereby winning him the spot for the best Hydro DPS. Pyro is all about DPS, but the ones that come to mind for an on-field damage dealer is Hu Tao, Yoimiya, Diluc, and Linny. Yoimiya has a really really fun kit, but honestly loses out to Linny and Hu Tao due to the ICD that she has on her normal attacks which reduces the reaction and hence overall damage for her. What's more, she is also single target and sometimes fires too slowly which causes her to take out the enemies a lot slower as well. Diluc has honestly been power crept heavily, especially by Hu Tao. He's unable to deal good reaction damage even when paired with the same team as her and has an annoying kit 
that leaves him without pyro damage for most of the time unless you use his elemental burst. That said, he has become a lot better after Xian Yun was released as it helps him to do pyro dragon strikes a lot easier and increases his overall damage as such. However, as his best kit is locked unless you have Xian Yun, it drops him down on my list. Out of the remaining two, my pick goes to Hu Tao, primarily also due to her ease to play. All she needs to do is to activate her elemental skill, which reduces her HP by 33% and grants her a pyro infusion on her normal, charged, and plunging attacks. Having her HP below 50% also activates her passive that increases her pyro damage. She can also deal good damage and heal with her elemental burst. Given that Hu Tao can deal a lot of reaction damage thanks to her gravitating more towards charge attacks, it increases her overall damage potential to help you to dispatch enemies a lot more easily. Linny on the other hand leans more towards a mono pyro team due to his passive. While this is by no means bad, it does somewhat limit his overall damage potential due to him causing fewer pyro reactions such as vaporize and melt. His main issue, however, stems from the fact that he's a bow and charged attack user, which makes his attack speed dependent on the bow's charge up time, thereby slowing down the overall damage that he can deal. What's more, he needs a healer in order to get the 5 Brain Makin stacks to deal the highest damage for his elemental skill, which will limit his team compositions as well. All in all, with a fast attack speed, strong reactions and ability to attack the enemy close range, it makes Hu Tao currently the best pyro DPS. That said, Alakino is releasing in patch 4.6 based on Genshin's drip marketing, so perhaps Hu Tao will finally be dethroned after 3 years since her release. For the final element, Cryo, we also have a 3-way fight between Ayaka, Ryofsli and Ganyu. Similar to Linny, Kanyu also suffers from the issues of being a charge attack user who has a speed limited by the charging speed of a bow. Although Kanyu was considered to be the top tier DPS at the time, at C0, it is difficult for her to dispatch enemies quick enough. That leaves us with Ryosli and Ayaka. Ryosli's kit is such that it allows him to deal more damage with his normal and charged attacks after using his elemental skill when his HP is above 50%. It also heals him if he uses his charge attacks if his HP is below 60%. Ryovsky's main damage comes from pairing him with Pyro Elements for huge melt reactions. His main issue is that at C0, you need to either pay attention to his HP and keeping it above 50% to maintain that normal attack and charge attack buff for him, but the healing aspect of the charge attack is limited to every 5 seconds. This is honestly a rather annoying aspect, surprisingly more so than having to keep Hu Tao's HP below 50% or you can also bring a healer instead, which may limit your team comps. As for Ayaka, she can activate a cryo infusion on her normal, charged and plunging attacks easily through dashing. This cryo infusion deals pretty good damage and can also easily activate freeze. Her main source of damage comes from a skill and burst which can in fact deal a lot of damage despite not being as favourable for melt compositions. Where she truly shines is of course through freeze reactions allowing her to immobilise the enemies while also dealing good damage in the process. I also personally feel that Ayaka is way easier to use than Ryosli as you don't have to worry about the HP aspect. It's honestly quite a difficult pick between Ayaka and Ryosli. Both of them have different functions and can deal good damage for both Freeze and Melt respectively. As such, I'm going to be naming both of them the best DPS for the Cryo element. Surprise! The last element, or lack thereof, is physical. Currently, the only physical DPS in the game is Eula. Eula's skill can increase her physical damage and reduce the enemy's cryo and physical resistance when held. Her primary source of damage, however, is from her elemental burst. After you activate her burst, 
hitting the enemies with attacks will increase the Light Fall Sword's damage, they will explode and deal huge physical damage after the timer ends or Eula switches out. Although physical really isn't too viable due to the huge number of shields in the game, she definitely is fun to play. With that, we've come to the end of today's video. What do you think? Do you agree with my picks? What are your own picks and why? Do let me know down in the comment section below. If you'd like to see which standard banner character is the most worth to build, please click the video on the right. If you would like to see my other Genshin Impact videos, please click the playlist on the left. Once again, thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye!